recording too? Yeah. Oh. oh are we perfect. live? Okay. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome um, to a Code Story today. And Dion and I were just saying that like one day we are going to run out of stuff to talk about because this is all impromptu. But um, but today's not the day. So yes. we're going to talk about codes. And you guys have all been prepped on um, the different types of codes and the ways to look at codes. And let me tell you, the reason why we are focusing on codes is not because we're obsessed with codes, even though we are obsessed with codes, but it's also because you guys have so many questions about them. And I think that, you know, my aha moment this morning was when I was going through that, um, that program that I have that has croquis in it. Yeah. And I saw all the stupid little coat drawings that they have and I thought, Oh my God, all these merchandisers, these young designers, like they're looking at apps like this and all these stupid little coats. And that's what like every big department store asks for those coats. And then you guys have crappy coat choices out there. And then you wonder why you, you buy, keep buying coats and then you inevitably have nothing to wear. So what we're gonna talk about today is um, what kind of coats function for what kind of purposes. We will talk about what is your starter coat, what's like the first couple of coats. Are you laughing at it? Yeah. Sorry, with people <laughs> well, making things at us fine. Um, anyways, we're gonna talk about what your starter coat is. Like if you had to buy one coat now, another coat later, another coat after that. Because remember, at my ripe old age, um, I've really accumulated a nice uh, round assortment of coats. So no one expects, if you're younger than me, no one expects for you to be going out and running and buying all of these different types of coats. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can't, right? Who wants to do that? So we'll show you the sequencing of what coats you should buy, what makes sense, how to layer, and why you probably don't ever need that super duper heavy coat. Um, unless you're like, I don't know, there have been days in New York or Russia, or wherever, where it certainly would warrant it. So, all right, so let's start with what you're wearing. So, I'm gonna show you guys um, a style of coat and then several different ways to wear, and so will Amy. Um, right now, I'm wearing the Miriam Tool Double Waist Pant, our new little featherweight cashmere cardigan that you guys are all loving, and then just tights and a heel. So this is pretty much like a standard go-to early fall outfit for me. And so for a lot of you who are just now building your wardrobes, I think it's really important to think about a couple of things when you're thinking about your first coat. The first thing is layering. Um, I'm gonna grab the coat, that's the question first. So, so, it doesn't seem like this would be your most practical option as a first coat. However, this being patent leather, that means it covers all of your occasions. So, for instance, if it's raining, this coat. If you're wearing something casual like I am, this coat. If you're wearing something even more casual than my fashion workwear, then you could still wear this coat. Now, if I wanted to do evening as well, this patent coat also works. So I'm going to uh, play around with showing you that too, but a couple of key details. Having a large pocket is really helpful and utilitarian, especially for city life, and especially for all the things that we have to carry now. Sanitizer, PPE, um, all of those things that you need to carry. Sometimes, like, if I carry this coat, I have so many hidden pockets that I don't really even need a handbag because I can throw my wallet in here, my phone, headphones here, keys here, and I'm all set and I don't look bulky. But if you see how this coat sits, it actually has that really beautiful cocoon shape in the back, so it's not very, um, it's still very above average, but surprisingly appropriate for all settings. I actually wore this on top of um, my, a sweatsuit yesterday and then just my like little Shirley Wine Birkenstocks to go run errands. And it still felt polished and put together. So if you have the right style of coat, this is something that really, really works for um, if, the, if you're trying to find your starter fashion coat. It's even your little mask hold. Yeah, you can hold your mask too. Because if it falls on the ground, I always carry a backup mask because if it falls on the ground, burn garbage. It belongs to the street. So it's also really helpful to have that metal ring detail. But yeah, you wouldn't even really need your handbag if you have a coat that has a really great utilitarian pocket. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't think that shine is practical for their everyday life, um, I think you should because it's very easy. This is my raincoat too. But the same silhouette comes in the Seymour, which comes in actually like a recycled 
cool. So, and, let, and let me put this one on because I was going to show this with um, with what I'm wearing. So um, while you show that, I'm going to get into a couple more outfits with this coat so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So what I want to show, this is the Seymour Recycle, as Dion said. And this is that uh, oversized coat that was that aha moment this morning for a lot of you guys. Okay, so we've got this extreme dropped shoulder here. And it's got this slope, but this is not literally straight out of like, you know, an 80s dynasty movie, right? Because what's keeping it really modern is all the interesting different menswear details. And then I can layer this to the hilt. But one of the things that you are looking for in a coat, I know a lot of you guys are like, okay, I bought, like if you're wearing, you, you, you've invested maybe in like the top with a little bit of sculpting, right? And maybe you've invested, this is the new uh, coated pant. We had done it in the tie dye for spring and we brought it back out again in the gray. So now you've invested in this. So the last thing you wanna do is reach into your closet and grab some janky little robe coat with like princess seams on it because it's just too out of character. And then that's when you guys are like, okay, I, I thought I felt good. I, I was like all rocking and rolling and then all of a sudden everything just got deflated. So one of the tenets of being a creative pragmatist is that element of modernity, uh, right? CMC, classic, modern, and chill. This coat, is the ultimate CMC coat. It's certainly a classic menswear fabrication. It's absolutely chill and it's completely modern, but most of all, the modernity is in the sculptedness of it. And the sculptedness is what keeps pace with the outfit that I'm wearing. So I'm not confused. I don't look like I have multiple personalities. Um, then the other thing I wanna show you guys is a lot of you asked me how I pinned up a sweater the other day. So I want to show you how you can take a sweater and just use it in your everyday life as your perfect scarf. So when I took the sweater the other day, so take your sweater, right? And I've the folded down parts. Now I tie it up around me just like a little bit. And then you bring it around. And then I took these little pins that uh, Hannah made and I just slide the pen in there and voila, right? Okay, so honestly, you can buy a big pen anywhere. Um, they've got the little Scottish kill pens, but this is that thing where like, I am so fully layered up and comfortable. And if I were doing something with my kids, I would just put on a pair of loafers and then I would maybe have a t-shirt on underneath here and then I'd have this sweater as an option um, so I don't have to have everything on all at once. So when we talk about layering, layering is, the key thing about layering is functionality. So it is really making sure that um, if I'm talking in a mom world, that you can go from a soccer field to an indoor pizza, you can be in a hot car, like you can do all these things and you're still in one outfit and you haven't compromised wherever you are you are just slowly adding or taking things away. Okay. So now I'm wearing something a little bit less work, more weekend, dress down. And if you notice, I'm wearing all neutrals. I'm wearing the lightweight fall terry crop sweatshirts that you, that you guys saw last week. And then these um, cropped denim cargo pants. They're so easy. Um, and then I have the tall navy boot on and the kitten heel. So if I do all these cool tones here with the black, it looks very daytime, easy, chic, and chill. And this is something that if I just put on a really nice earring and a smaller handbag, I have something that can also take me to dinner time as well. But you see how it just, the energy of the coat changes just depending on what outfit you're wearing? It really is a blank canvas. So this is the faux patent leather coat, by the way. It also comes in red, which I'm gonna show you later on in the live, but it's just so easy. And then if you have all of your without fail pieces and some of your in and out pieces from fall, like this sweatshirt here, this is something that I consider without fail because I will always 
need something like this in my wardrobe for travel, even to just throw on in the early spring back to lighter weight pieces as well, because I'm always cold inside. But just how easy is that? Also, if you notice, if I wanted to add a layer, the drop shoulder makes it a lot easier to do. And what's nice about this look, it looks really nice with the patent, but if I wanted to throw on the Seymour coat, I could also do that as well. So this is the exact same shape that I was talking about. So I'm wearing a size four and everything. The pants, I normally take a two, but this is the sample, so I have them clamped up a little bit. But everything else is a small or a four. So this is the exact same silhouette. It's just in that recycled wool material that's based in Italy. Super easy chic. And it builds a completely different color story. And what's great about it is if you're thinking about color, it's still none. These are all neutrals. This is that really gray-based green here. So it's just really chic, elevated, and it's the exact same look, but for those people that don't really wanna wear a lot of shine, this is your alternative here. So if I wanted to wear the shiny Lars boot with this, I could, but if I were wearing the Lars boot, I wouldn't be wearing that patent leather coat because it gets a little too shine on shine, very matrix. I'm gonna go change into a more evening driven look with the patent coat, so I'll be right back. Cool. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do a slow buildup on an outfit here. Before I do that though, I wanna bring in Hannah because a lot of you guys, um, you love the taffeta pant last week. We did the balloon pant, then a, a really amazing nylon, Italian nylon taffeta fabric. So um, a lot of you asked, what does that look like on someone who is uh, four feet 11? Which is ironically Hannah's height. So Hannah, come on out. So Hannah, you're wearing the size zero, zero. right? Yeah. Okay. And Hannah's one who you guys know if you follow Hannah at uh, Tibby um, or Hannah U, she like she'll wear a size four half the time as well. So she likes things nice and big and roomy. Definitely the zero is roomy enough for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I don't mind the zero zero too. Yeah, I think. So. And if, if Hannah were to take a size zero zero, it would hit just a little bit higher on the waist for her, and it would give the illusion of maybe like an inch shorter on the length uh -huh. if you did that. Yeah. So you're wearing yours just really down nice and low. Yeah, I, I love how like easy here, but um, if I feel a little bit long, then I actually, this is my way of like, shortening, mm -hmm. <laughs> not cutting off, but I like just doing it like this way, so like that. I just um, and you know how we do show how we can shorten things a lot with like rubber bands, safety pins, and all of that. But when a pant has the elasticized bottom like this, it really is best just to roll it up and shorten it in uh -huh. that way. But and also I can use this. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I would put that in the case. Sometimes if you um, try and paper bag something, but you actually put it through the belt loops, it doesn't really get the effect that you want. What's great is really just hike the pant up to where you want it and then belt yourself. So that's like super chic. And I also, um, I love the use of a brown belt with this because the brown with the pink tempers it and sometimes pink and black on its own uh, can look a little more aggressive. So that pink with the brown is super you kind of walk towards the so chic. Oh, I don't see I did it perfectly, but that's how I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. And Hannah, what size are you wearing in the sweater? This is a size small. Okay, so Hannah's wearing a small in the sweater. And this is <laughs> this is our super shrunken sweater. So, you know, <laughs> if you're Hannah's size, it's not so shrunk if you get it in the size small. And then this is the big oversized. Yeah, so. but I actually would wear much more with the big, you know, but I That's like both. Style. Style. Yeah. Well, I, I think both of them layered way. up is really nice yeah. too. Yes, that's like how I always do for winter time that I don't mind just do whatever with this sweater. 
But yeah. this is super soft, so you can just wear as like inside outside and be careful. And this is where, you know, when we talked about like coats that are one and done, I also find too that when a sweater is too bulky and heavy, it doesn't allow you to really layer up with it. Mm -hmm. So this is when I love these softer pieces, especially when you're traveling, like you would take all of these pieces, you would bring blazers and coats and just layer and layer and layer. Yeah. Good job. Cool. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah. I have a fun trip with that sweater too because mm -hmm. it, wearing the two sweaters is just really chic and wonderful and yeah. it just you know it really works for if you aren't if you don't want to wear a coat yeah. wearing the two sweaters that other sweater becomes your scarf you can even wear it on your shoulder too and just keep it exactly. so this is more of an evening look for me I'm still wearing the lightweight fall terry and this is something I want to really want to talk about is if you get a sweatshirt that is in a really nice material like this it is perfect for dressing up and down. Like if I were wearing a patent leather pant, I could go to dinner with my girlfriends. And here I'm wearing it back to the Lana Falcope skirt. So if, I don't know if you can see, but I'm gonna hold up so you can see the contrast. It has that beautiful like floral motif here that's sheer. So it's really just beautiful. And I do wanna point out like when you, again, you guys ask about like, where should I invest and what are my first pieces? When you are looking at a sweatshirt that is has the ultimate in versatility, it seems ironic and strange to say this, but actually investing money in a good sweatshirt is really, really key because then it does look refined enough to go to evening and it's absolutely appropriate in an office and you can go to the grocery store or do whatever exactly. with your kids, right? And I actually, I mean, I love my Tibby ones. Um, I have a lot of the Dries Van Noten men's ones as well. and. I wear them to death. So sometimes like you think you can get the bulky like Hanes one and yeah. it works for some things but not always. You can't dress it up. It doesn't have a refined element. That's yeah. why when the pandemic hit, I didn't rush to go buy a bunch of athleisure. I waited and I like, I really wanted this one and I'm glad that I got it because it really has served me because I can wear it, work from home with my nylon joggers and the slide and then I can Throw it up with a skirt like this. And but remember, so she's got the drop shoulder on this. So it's really important then when you're wearing a coat that it has got to either have a raglan sleeve or a drop shoulder. Because if it doesn't, then that's when you put something on it, it gunches all up under your arms. Exactly. And feels icky. That's why we're always endorsing the Liam coat because it's her every day, which we'll go into that in more detail. But it's her every day, but it just really works. Um, when you're done with that, I'm going to layer up. Perfect. So, again, if I wanted to make this more evening rather than daytime, still works. So, think about how versatile that is. I feel like when people see a patent coat, again, size four, I'm wearing all samples here. So, everything is a small or a four. Um, this is something that, you know, it actually takes you a lot more places. And I think people get really intimidated when they see a patent, but I've shown you things that are all very, very appropriate for your setting. And it is one, I, you know, speaking to moms, because I, I did get a lot of mom questions from you guys, that's one that like, if you did walk out on the soccer field with that and a pair of black sweatpants or a pair of black jeans and sneakers, like you are going to have the mom who's like, I had no idea we were like so fancy. But in the meantime, when it's raining out, she's standing there like soaking wet in her whatever. And yeah. you're you're like everything's just going off you and you're comfortable and warm and and that um, that kind of comfort and utility utilitarianism is like the best. Like let it lead you. No one can ever make you feel bad when you're sitting there and you're so dry. And exactly. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. When it has that element of practicality, you yeah. know. So what I'm going to show you is, um, like Dion said, she held off on the whole, you know, running out and buying all the sweats from home, blah, blah, blah. Um, and for us, uh, from a design perspective, we held off too. We, we were like, we don't need to jump like head on into the sweatshirt game. But if we do come up with something that feels really tibby and that you can know it when you see it, then we're definitely going to do it. And so that is what we did. We did create um, a really great sweatsuit. We showed it as part of the resort collection that went up on Vogue a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, these are going to be out in, I think, a week or two. Uh, but they're really great. So this is the sweat pant. Um, it's got the sculpted bottom, so it is a shape that you guys are all very familiar with. And where it hits all the marks is it looks just as good with the heel as it would with sneakers or with loafers. Um, the great thing is uh, because these sweatpants, what we've done on them is, and the sweatshirt, it has a matching sweatshirt, which is really interesting and cool too. Um, what we've done though is they are being sold prim primarily directly to you guys and through some of our uh, very, very, very favorite specialty partners. So what that means is we are actually doing these, the, the pants are 185 and the sweatshirt is 185. So it is a really um, approachable price point, um, which is very right for this moment. And I think you guys are going to love them. We've done them in the black and in gray and um, then for spring, we've done them in a really great army green. So you guys are gonna love them. And that's what I'm wearing right now. So these are coming soon. But what I wanted to show you in terms of layering, this is our um, it's cold press sweater or heat press? I can't remember. Anyways, I'll tell you later afterward. But this is our sweater. I'm wearing a size small in the pants. Um, earlier on the uh, wax denim, I was wearing a size four in those pants. And then this is a small in the sweater here. So I just want to show you layering. All right. So here I am. I'm layering away. And let's say I'm like all cash. So I'm going to put on um, a pair of loafers. These are, you guys love the Morris loafers in the black and the white. These are our crop ones that we've done for spring. I think these are ready in January. They're, they'll be leaving Italy in January. Okay. So now I'm like all super cash, right? Okay. Then for me, in terms of like really wearing your clothing, one of the other things that I love to wear, it is my identifier, is a big suiting blazer. This is one from a couple of years ago. Um, I can never have too many, but when you guys talk about like what are things to invest in, this, this was a good one. This one's about four or five years old right now. Um, but this is how I would make this outfit completely my thing. But then the next level that I would do is if I were going out and if you just hold it for a second, let me grab it for me, is I would take my the oversized. Uh, I'm just looking for the tan. I'll take out of this too. Oh, this is fine. Actually, can I just leave? Actually, oh, double up. So I would put my jacket back on, and then I'm going to wear this as a scarf. So you guys see, how, see, I didn't take it off, right? I just left it around my head, and now I'm going to tie it and it becomes like this amazing scarf. And then I've got on the quilted coat here. Okay, so you guys saw my like little Seinfeld video this morning of George in the quilted coat and how he can't move. I can absolutely move in this. So I do love quilted coats. And I do, like to be honest, I do like the super puffy one too. Like mm -hmm. Balenciaga did it, Montclair has them. But I like them very extreme. I like the Montclair shiny one yes. that's like, extreme but that's my that is my like designer moment coat because that's that would not be my practical coat i would find much more practicality here living in the northeast um visiting places like Prague. i would be layered up i'd put on a thermal layer i've got my t-shirt i've got my sweater i've got my jacket and i've got this but i don't look insane um, but I definitely have options. No matter where I'm going, I can layer and de-layer. And so we say, you know, especially when you're traveling, don't bring that like big ass gigantic coat. You know, every time like on the airplane yes. in the winter, there's always some fool walking down the aisle with like this huge coat on. Yeah, and you're gonna be sweating 80% of the time in, like indoors exactly. when you're walking around shopping. Be sweating, you take it up the whole airline bin. Yeah. Like annoying. So layer, layer, layer. Ooh, I actually have a fun trick with that sweater though. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have you put it back on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And without the blazer. I just wanna show this little trick because I definitely have done this when I've layered up at the airport. When we can never go there again. But also, 
when you're packing something like this, you can even turn it into something that's a little bit more dressed up. So if you put that back on your head, mm -hmm. and if you just you can turn this into kind of like a really cool shawl as well. So you just put it on your shoulder, yeah, like that, and you can tie it and even fasten it with a brooch or oh. something. So I like to do this, like I like to pack like very light and then I can just repurpose my things. Yes. Once you start doing more deep dives into our live videos, and if you take all of those styling packs in your pocket, you can repurpose your clothing so many times. I love that. Favorite. You can also tie it in the back too, and it's a really nice clean look too. I feel like, <laughs> Yeah. can I just, um, like I promised you guys, this, this, this is not rehearsed. Like I feel like this could be like one of those cheesy yeah, moments. Yeah, it's totally not rehearsed. But it's yeah. like, why? Damn, that's a fabulous. But like, I love this, and this is not rehearsed. Cool. Thank you. I love this. Okay. So a lot of you are from warm climates. I'm actually from Alabama. Amy's from Georgia. So a lot of the time, you don't really need to invest in a heavy coat. But it's also like the high is usually around 60, and the low is like 40. And it's like, what do I wear? Um, and how do I get something that is really in between and still feels luxurious? Because I feel like the thing that I always gravitated towards and it's something that I, I think that people need to move away from is getting that small leather jacket. It doesn't take you a lot of places. It's not polished. It's good to, like, it's good to have that in your wardrobe if that's something you like. But I think if you want something a little bit more polished that you can kind of dress up and down, Something like this style, which is like a blazer, but it's also a coat. It's I call it a not quite a blazer. This is actually made out of boiled wool. It has these custom snaps here and on the sleeve. So you can actually take this, scrunch up your sleeve and snap it. And that way it stays up. It's very versatile. When you see here, I'm just wearing it with my Eco Silk trousers. And I'm actually wearing my blazer as a top because it has the little open back snap detail. It's a full functional snap here. So I can also take this and layer it with one of my black featherweight turtlenecks and that's pretty much all you need for a, a warmer climate in the winter. I absolutely love this style because it's it just really covers your all of your bases and it's dropped enough to where if you wanted to wear a ribbed turtleneck you could fit that underneath. Um, also I really like this big pocket. These are tacks because this is a new one but I'm wearing a size 4 in this jacket but it's just really nice and I want to get up close so you can really see the detail because it is a boiled wool and look at all of those details like this is so much more elevated than having like a shrunken motorcycle jacket what we want is for you to kind of step outside of your comfort zone a little bit and you can actually invest in something like this it seems like something that you would either pick a blazer or a coat but if you live in a warm climate this is perfect this could be your coat for you Oh, cute. Oh, Hannah? Yeah. We're going to have Hannah come out because she's wearing the Liam coat. So this, is, again, we're talking about the drop shoulder. The Liam is a silhouette that we've recut over and over again in different fabrications. It's never the same one. We have the camel, we had the um, navy blue, and now we have the Matt's menswear coating. So a little backstory in the Matt's menswear. It's actually made from recycled yarns and it's sourced in Italy. So that fine material is really chic, cool, and it's also you know, an eco-friendly style. So this one has a new detail here with the button over because the classic Liam before just had the signature button here, but now you have it so you can cinch at the waist and even belt this style. Hannah, you can actually yeah. come up closer. Yeah. I love the mats because Hannah's petite and she is still wearing this in a way that still flatters her, it's elevated, and it's also something so that pretty. like, you can even bring this collar up and fasten and like it with a pen yeah. like we did on the Vogue shots. So it's a very versatile style. It has that custom metal ring detail again in the back. Let me turn around and show. But this is something that actually can work over some of those dresses you have, like the, um, the tissue faux leather pleated dress, which is very elevated nighttime style. You can wear that with a tall boot and still look yeah. really chic. Well, I look a little different. Yeah, it looks totally different <laughs> with the collar up versus down. So yeah. for some of you that have the older Liam style, if you have managed to hold on to your button bag, you can actually DIY that crossover and add a button right here on the seam so you can do the crossover on yourself. Mm -hmm. I did that with my old Liam blazers yeah. too. And I like very this happy way too. Just, yeah. So you can just take it off one yeah. of button in here and then just put it there and then just switch the direction whatever you want. 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so chic. I, I collect Liam's. I don't have this one yet, but I will. Yeah, I want to have one. And the reason I came out, you know, I got the um, silk burden pants, but I really love it. <laughs> I just wanted to show Oh, perfect. Yeah, she's I'm wearing the same pants as me. Just yeah. so you can see. What size are you wearing? Let's do a side by side. This is zero. Okay. Let's yeah. do a side by side. If you shift over, we're going to do a side by side because I just want to show oh. how it's hitting on oh, both yeah, of us. Yeah. Because I'm wearing the two. Yeah. This is, I'm wearing the size four. They're sitting a little lower, but. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 5'6. How tall are you? I'm 4'11. Four, 4'11. Eleven. Four, eleven. So for those of you who have been asking about some of the balloon pants on a petite size, here you go. It's still, it hits in a different spot, but it's still very chic. And also, you can bring this up if you want it in belts, if you want them to hit a little bit more the way that yeah, they are. You still have the lengths, so you can wear it a bit higher, mm -hmm. which is fine. Also, oh, can I show the crisscross detail? I showed this last week, but I want to show it again. All right. So, what did you do? so you just take it, and then you bring it over to this side, oh, and then just like that. Sweet. So, yeah. you just take it, and you um, unbutton it, bring it up, we're gonna both show you. All right, this way. Yeah, and you just slide it over here. Oh. Then I might need a little bit. One size bigger it might be good for me. Yeah, it's, it's better if yeah. you have oh, the size well, up, yeah. just like that. So if you want to bring right. it higher, you can. I showed this last week, but I like to refresh uh -huh. your memory. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so um, keep around with some okay. of the casual looks because a lot of you guys feel like for work and for um, evening that you have things covered. So I just want to show you if I was wearing this casually, of course right now I'm wearing socks and a heel with it because that's just what I felt like. Uh, but I would absolutely wear loafers or sneakers, whatever. So I want to show you um, layering here as well. So this is um, when we talked about like Liam coats forever, I just want to show you um, you guys don't get to have this one. I'm showing this to you because this is an example of one that back in the day, I think we did this one about seven years ago and we ended up dropping it from the line because none of the buyers would buy it. But I have it, I love it, and I'll wear it forever and ever. And so, you know, a lot of the coats that I pulled out today um, to talk about are ones that I've had for seven or eight years. And so a good coat will last you a really long time. So I think that um, not every coat has to be like the forever coat. We talk about, you know, woofs and in and outs and had to have. So not every coat is a without fail, a woof. They're definitely in and outs. And, you know, sometimes you buy a coat that is a had to have. Um, but it is good that when you are starting out, if you really focus your purchases on those things that will have a tremendous amount of practicality to them, then um, then you'll have them forever and you'll wear them to death. And so just what I wanna point out with this one, and this can just be like illustrative of these types of coats, you know, it's got a menswear tweed to it. Um, it's got a pattern that is actually exactly enough. If I were wearing a white dress and burgundy boots, it would be an amazing detail to it. Um, and then you wear it with denim and it's very, very quiet. So when you look at like your forever coat, you're not saying I'm buying a forever coat, therefore it must be black wool or it has to be a camel coat. That's not true at all. And in fact, it might be the opposite because if you're going to wear your coat a lot, then whenever you are wearing your coat, you want to feel interesting and modern and cool. And so if you buy a coat that is not interesting, modern, and cool, then you will not feel interesting, modern, or cool, cool most of the time. But I do want to show you, too, again, going back to the whole uh, puffy coat thing, because we do love them. Um, this is the really good puffy coat. So if I were, you know, leading like that really, you know, just a life well lived, right? You're running around doing a hundred things. This is uh, the perfect coat for that. And so I love it over denim and it's chic enough over something all black. Um, really looking for those materials. This is filled with all the filling. It's great and puffy, you can sleep in it. Um, personally for me, I don't love this coat belted. I don't ever wear a coat belted. Um, but some people I've heard are weird about belt loops and when they don't belt things. And I'm the opposite. I don't belt things 
a lot of the time, but I definitely want the belt loops there because belt loops oddly finish a look to me. So when I have something like this, I'll actually just tie it so that it doesn't get lost and then you just let it hang down and then this has a zipper option to it so you can stay nice and cool. Okay. Oh, that's your shoulder. Oh, yeah. Shoulder and and if you are like me, you know, guys, I'm on the subway half the time, etc., and it does get really hot, you can also just take it off and walk around like as if you're about to take off for flight, uh, but in the chic as well. Okay. So this coat comes in handy when you are going shopping and it is frigid outside because for me, if I'm wearing a coat that, that that's that heavy and I'm going around shopping, instead of carrying it around along with the things that you're trying to buy and your winter coat and everything, it just it's good that you can just take it off and still not have to carry it. You know, trying to make life easier. So this is the same material as the Liam coat that Hannah was wearing earlier, the Matt's men's wear. So we want to talk about this coat because this is not a coat that you can layer underneath with, but it is still such a stunning silhouette. I would consider this like one of your have to have coats. Yeah. It's got that sculpted shoulder, it's got the interesting snaps, it's got that beautiful recycled material, pockets on the sides. But what's nice about a coat like this is that it does have this nice vintage inspiration to it, but you can wear it on top of your winter dress and stay impossibly warm. There's there's, okay, yes, I have a, had to have in and outs and all that, right? But I think one of the ways also to look at buying coats is, you know, you've got your like four coats that fill that need of like, can I go from work to grocery store to brunch in it? And can I, you know, like really, really, really the hardest working coats. Then you can have a couple of coats that don't work that hard, but they also, would never be thrown away. So like if I bought this coat, I would never toss it. Whenever I needed a coat that needed to give like a really special moment to something, mm -hmm. this is a coat that I would go to. So maybe I would wear it, for me, maybe I would wear it 10 times a year in the, in the land of COVID, you know, where yes. like nothing's open. I mean, if I were going to an office, I'd wear it a lot. But um, you know, it's one that like, I would wear it 10 times a year, but I would wear it 10 times a year for the next 30 years. And so it becomes like that coat that serves that need in your closet. So when you are out looking at buying new things, like of course, you know, you have to love things emotionally and all that, like that's really important, right? But when you're thinking about what you have in your closet, your checkbox isn't like, oh, I've got a black coat in my closet. Your checkbox in your head is, Oh, I've got that coat that like whenever I'm just wearing that clean black dress that it gives it like that yes. something something. So that's your checkbox. Not about a fabric, not about a color, but about like what is that coat doing in your closet. Because another example, Dion, if you don't mind taking that one off, is having the evening coat. Yes. And you know, we do a lot of evening coats, but for me it's kinda like I stopped here. Like this is, you know, I have one, that's all I need. Um, again, not liking to tie things. I yeah, I would leave the sash off. It's a yeah. little sweet for me. Yeah, or I just leave it like tied yeah. and, and loose. And also, this is kind of that like it's technically a purple-based pink. That's why it doesn't look so harsh in like '80s with black. If it's like a exactly. true pink, like listen, there's good '80s and bad '80s, but a true pink with black is bad '80s. I just have to throw that out there. Yeah, but and, like, and trust me, we've gone there before, and it's like the runway shows that I look back on. I like, had a Madame well, Alexander doll that had a pink. <laughs> so it's like you know having that shade and that's when you just have to start learning about colors um it's like color theory basically yeah. if you're gonna have like a pink it needs to either have like a blue base to it or a purple base for it to be able to go with an extreme dark okay. just and when we color. talk it's this is very much like talking in the moment for like your everyday life because yes. remember what we love about fashion is one thing that we thought was hideous two months ago can all of a sudden be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is not about like, you know, Everlane or like any of those brands that are like just purely like beige, white, black, and blah, blah, blah. Yes. This is about like still loving and embracing newness. I mean, my God, like I crave 
something new and I love it if Balenciaga or someone makes me see something through a whole new lens that's like that's life for me so um, some of you will now go through old Tibby pictures and send me pink things and be like what about this you, you said you yes. hated this and it's like I hated it till I didn't and then I didn't until I hated it again so it's true because even with like it even with black and white we had such a long period where we never wanted to style black and white Correct. together because it felt very like you know, Garçon, like yeah, I waitress exactly. forever. Like, yeah, so it has now, certain connotations, but then all of a sudden it feels fresh. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it's like amazing. But it's also like, think about how many color rules have gone in and out of the world. Like my parents are so anti-black and brown. I've been trying to get them on the bandwagon for me, but it's just, you know, it's just a different world. And same with black and navy. Things can kind of come in and out when it comes to color trends. I'm trying to put this on to show you. This is another great photo. I've got, I'm missing a sleeve. Okay, so also, this vegan leather trench is also another one that acts very similarly to the faux pattern. You can take it, you can dress it down if I were wearing jeans and like a, one of my like favorite little acne sneakers and a sock. Also, she, and I can wear this over my outfit for work wearing a suiting or something, it still works. And then over this evening dress, it still works. And I just threw this on my, our floor is so dirty. We're like, we're mopping the floors ourselves now in our like yes. COVID world. Um, and I didn't mop over there, so it's covered with dust. So I might have like a few dust bunnies. Yeah. Um, so I just want to show you too now, like we all love, we love these new fitted uh, lightweight cashmeres. And then of course at Tibby, like we love our big gigantic cashmeres as well. So this is when this coat becomes, oh, it's here, because I think we're over that too, it's more interesting. Yes. So this is when this coat is really working so hard for me. Um, and it also does real double duty for me because I have boys at home. And so, you know, this stuff flies across every gender, right? And so the guys look great in this too. And, um, and this works, okay? So. You really want to be able to do that. You can't, you know, you, if you're gonna get on board with like a whole big sweater moment, then you're screwed if all your little jackets are all jacked up. The tiny, under the arm yeah, it's true. Exactly. And yeah. what's great too is uh, when you, the, the worst thing to me to wear with the sequin dress like this is an average, like, the black like coat or like the denim. The black coat or jacket. a shrunken motor jacket. But when I, I see people motor. wear a shrunken motor jacket with the evening dress. Yeah. I want to send them home, but I don't have the authority to do that. <laughs> so so this is like chic, and I think if you put on like a big black leather glove or something with exactly. it, you would kind of just be, like at least you're kind of working the moment. To me, it's not perfect, but yeah. it's working the moment. This, this, is, this works in a very, like, I'm from, I live in Brooklyn, so it's like, this would totally work for me, because I feel like if I wore my evening coat, it would be a step too dressed up, so this is kind of a way to do that where you still look elevated. Um, again, I really like to take a material like this, when it has that interesting vintage feel, because this is made out of a recycled material, ha adding shine to something like this is what adds that nice dose of modernity to things. Yes. Um, okay. So, I am going to do um, a little surprise. This is unplanned, but we're gonna do a coat giveaway. And um, this is on a coat that we did not go into production on. And I'll put it on for you and I'll explain why. But um, if you are the uh, first um, person to DM, uh, well, actually, let me show it to you first and make sure that you like it and that um, it'll fit you and then I'll tell you what to do. So, this is the coat. That little red stitch there means that it was from the runway. And um, I thought I was going to like so love this coat. This was from 2019, fall, last year. Okay, so this had um, all of these like interesting little contraptions here. It had this really big collar that we were super feeling and it snaps up like this. So um, it is like that super chic, just like the plaid one that Dion had on earlier. 
it's that moment coat. You're not gonna wear it every single day. It actually does have an inset armhole, which is limiting for that. Um, this is open here, that's limiting again. You've gotta think about like, what's your neckline? What kind of sweater are you wearing? So all of these limitations, one of the reasons why it didn't make it into the line was that we had other coats that filled that need of like that kind of one and done, interesting, it doesn't go with everything in your life, but it's a special coat. So it's funny, like if any of you guys are aspiring merchandisers out there and even my design team, when I would come back to them, I'm like, you know what? It didn't sell because we were covered in that. And they're like, how could you be covered in it? We only had one blue coat that had like big red plaid and a lapel. And I'm like, no, we were covered in the idea of it. So we did not go into production on it, but I love it. So if you can please um, DM, um, uh, let's see, it's Teresa underscore Tibby or personal stylist underscore Tibby. And if you can DM them with, um, I'm just making this up on the spot, DM them with the name of my favorite store that is in uh, Denver, Colorado, as well as Aspen. And DM them with the name of my favorite store in Paris, France. And um, they just launched a website too, which is really, really cool. And it's totally, um, gender neutral, it's amazing. Um, so if you DM them with those two names, the name of the store in Denver and Aspen and the name of the store in Paris, France, then um, if you get it right, then you'll receive this code, okay? Uh, it is a size small or a size four, I can't remember. But if you're a six, you'll fit in it. If you'll, or two, you'll fit in it. And um, if you're Hannah, you'll probably complain that it's too small. So <laughs> there, there you go. True. All right. so. I'm wearing the faux patent coat in a very dressed down way to really show you that even the rust colorway does the exact same thing. So basically I'm wearing the Morris loafer and then I'm wearing that lightweight fall Terry sweatshirt dress. This is like a great off-duty off outfit. Back to my new Tibby logo baseball cap. These are brand new, they just launched from the website. This is the logo that we had for the fall 2020 campaign when we did our shoot in the bodega and the restaurants. So that's here, it also comes in a navy blue as well. But see how versatile that is? Also, if I wanted to take the same outfit and make it more winter appropriate with a tight and a tall boot, then I could do that same coat that Nadine was just wearing, the Clyde padding. So this does the same thing. But again, you want to do a tall boot and a tight or something. Um, if you do an an over-the-knee boot would even be chic, especially like that Bottega combat boot or something, so you're really winter ready. And then you could do like an elongated glove, but that still works, because otherwise, you know, if you do something that's like here or here, you're gonna get a little bit of skin sandwich, but if you do a black tight and a black boot, it'll still work. But, you know, still the same idea. A lot of you are just kind of doing grocery runs and not going much, at going anywhere else, so this actually really works. But you're still elevated and chic. I feel very incognito right now, I love it. But I want to talk about this sweatshirt dress for a second because we actually, on uh, our runway looks, we actually styled this in black over that same Lana File Coupe skirt that I was wearing earlier. So you can actually make this one of your favorite layering pieces, especially in that dark navy colorway we have. If you wore this over a black wide leg trouser and then an interesting shoe, it's a really layerable piece. So for me, this is sweat. The sweatshirt dress is a wolf. Like I can wear this in early fall. It's got this really great cocoon shape. Wearing it back to a loafer, and it still looks really chic and nice. So this would be a size small or four for me. And again, you see that it's got that drop shoulder here. So it's something that you would have to wear with a drop shoulder coat. But with the padding and the Clyde padding, you can actually scrunch the sleeve and put it on if it has enough room. So that is one hack that you can do if you are wearing a drop shoulder piece without a drop shoulder coat. But preferably a drop shoulder works. Also, if I wanted, if it was raining outside, now we're doing my little tall Bottega combat boots, I can still throw on this nylon one. So if you're kind of seeing this overarching trend, this silhouette is the exact same as the patent trench and the Seymour coat and this recycled wool. 
And also, if you guys purchase the basket weave during sale on sale, it's the same silhouette as well. We're trying to tell you something. This is one of the most versatile silhouettes that you can really purchase. And depending on what your needs are, this quilting one is like the most elevated quilted coat. It works with a lot. If I were wearing a black tropical wool trouser and like a nice cashmere sweater, I would look elevated enough to go meet someone for dinner. I have such new respect for runway bubbles. Well, Amy, give answers tomorrow in stories. And if someone's <laughs> asking if they're going to give answers tomorrow in stories. Um, of what the I guess question? the questions, yeah. Well, no, because you're going to hear back from one of you lucky guys is going to hear back from uh, Ashton or Teresa on who won the amazing code. So um, this was so knotted up back there. Oh, please. I could no 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 it was just like okay so I wanted to show you guys the um, the one shoulder dress and I wanted to talk to you about some of the inspiration behind the taffeta dress so when we created this collection uh, I as I mentioned last week it was in the height of COVID it was in June July and we just um, we didn't know how we were going to feel in November, to be honest, like I had no idea it was still going to be as bad as it is, but we knew that we wanted to be, um, that we just wanted to do what we wanted, right? So that's like as far as we overthink things sometimes. And so one of the things is that we wanted to create things that we would wear that would make us feel beautiful and special. Uh, we did it in this taffeta because it does feel deceptively like you are wearing uh, sweat suiting um, and we wanted something that would feel just as comfortable with socks and sandals as it would with a full-on blinged out evening pump and also it's something that if I were to come to the door and I was barefoot I don't think that um, the <laughs> the quarantine friendly number of guests that I was having over would think that I wasn't dressed yet they would think well this is just, you know, how we're dressing right now. This is how we roll in the time of COVID. So um, I just wanted to put this on for you guys to see like how great it is. And um, this is another, I wanted to show you this coat because, Dion, who did we say had this in the gray? Um, Essence has it in the gray. That's right, Essence. Okay, so this is a coat that we did um, last year. Yes, last, last resort, and we did it a couple years before. Oh, so. right, we we, 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 <laughs> we recut it. Okay, so uh, this is the cream color way, but we have it in the most beautiful mink gray. It is at essence.com, S-S-E-N-S-E.com. They have it on sale there, because it was from an older season. But this is like the ultimate, like when you don't want to wear fur, this is a faux fur. Um, and it does feel amazing and because Essence has them, it's a question that I get a lot of times you guys snag old pictures of these Temu, always wore it. Um, yes. So I wanted to let you know that Essence does have them in the gray and it's super chic for evening time. Also that looks so nice with that green coat on too. Recycled. Oh yeah, I'll try it. So while she's trying on the recycled, coat that we absolutely love. I'm actually wearing the Mele Mock Rib dress. This is one of my favorite sweater dresses that has a beautiful cotton ball material underneath. So it actually has like a really interesting car wash pleat like you've seen in our other coat. So I'm playing around with colors. This rust colorway really works well with neutrals like this camel color and then my brown boot. So it's, this is really one color for one time or not but it just shows how versatile it is because if you have something ultra casual like I was wearing earlier in the lightweight fall Terry sweatshirt dress, back to this beautiful elegant sweater dress too. And then if I also wanted to wear this over the evening dress, if you check last week's IG Live, I wore this with the pink taffeta one shoulder dress and I absolutely loved it. Also, we're talking sweater dresses. Sweater dresses are such a great hero piece because it does a completely different thing the second I throw it on with black. And if I were wearing like a really cool earring and my hair pulled back, I could definitely wear this to meet up with my girlfriends for a socially distanced drink outside before it gets too cold. Uh, oh, great. So I'm gonna try on the green. And because I'm putting it on the green and I'm wearing black, 
I went and I switched into the white sheet. Oh, perfect. Right? So those are those things, guys, when you're in your closet and something's bugging you, like we said, fiddle with your hair, fiddle with your shoes. So mm -hmm. the, the brown just felt too dark. So I think we're going to um, leave you guys. Are we going to leave on this one? Because I think we're uh, running. Oh, no, I was told 10 minutes a while ago. Uh, five minutes. Okay. Um, so what I want to show with this one is um, when you have these lightweight trenches like this, these are the ones that just like you wear them to living death because, you know, when you get into the months of like, like September, October, uh, March, like those are such weird months. You never know what the temperature is going to be, right? It's just crazy. So for me, I love to have something that is like super, super lightweight that you can just throw on. But if I were traveling, you know, this is where I would bring in like one of the little bit heavier coats too, and I would layer this up. But what's great about this coat, when you buy these, um, we had a plaid trench in the outlet that had completely sold out. It was, I wear to death too. Because what's great with these lighter coats is they give you the exact amount of like coverage and warmth that you need, but then like they literally can squish up into like a tiny ball like this, right? So if you're carrying just a big tote bag or whatever, then you are fully, fully covered. So when we talk about your woofs, the first coats that you should buy, one of the first coats that you should buy is any kind of lightweight trench that has one of the most trenches have a raglan sleeve or a really drop shoulder sleeve don't buy the trenches that have the real inset sleeve there it is it does the opposite a trench is supposed to be like super effortless you're supposed to be able to just throw it on so if you buy one that's got an inset arm hole you're going to screw yourself and it's not going to work out okay so you want to buy anything with the raglan sleeve you want that coat that just can layer up over so many things and go to the grocery store. You know, every time you go out on the weekend, this is going to be your go-to coat. So you want any kind of super chill, oversized coat that you can put in all your oversized, amazing options. Your other, without fail, has to be the sculpted coat. If you are a wearer of Tivy, if you like things that are modern, then you need a sculpted coat because every time it is going to be like you're putting a pin into your outfit and deflating everything if you go out in some coat that is not level to the same like uh, to the same level of the clothing that you're wearing. Um, so one last. yeah, one last. So a lot of you that have purchased this beautiful, oh, like this beautiful cozy fleece. I just wanted to show you how to layer with this one. Again, it's your drop shoulder coat. This is how I would probably make it a little bit more casual, but could still wear this to the office. But if you notice you have a drop shoulder, this bulk doesn't really feel like bulk at all. Also, for those of you who live in climates that don't necessarily need a coat, this is all you need. You can throw this on. You see I have it with the gray leather shorts, but you can also wear these with the sculpted denim. And then even just like, I even wear this with my like, I have these leggings, these capri leggings, and like a tall, my tall boot that you has a tall boot or a loafer because we talked about this yeah. jacket a lot on the weekend because a lot of people were like, "Oh my god, I felt too average in it. What was I doing?" And yes, we said, you have to so elevate jeans and like the sneaker that feels wrong. Yeah, because even if I were wearing a baseball cap, because I have this green leather on, it really feels so elevated and nice, and also it has that beautiful vegan DMF free faux leather trim here. So it really is something that you can dress up given the right separates. I've done this with a pencil skirt too in leather. I know a lot of you guys bought that on sale. It still works. I think people just need to get into the habit of trying to pair anything cozy like this, including our alpaca. You wanna pair it with something with a little bit of shine or um, something like a boot that is very substantial and chic, like our kitten boot. So to leave on this, um, I didn't have a Liam coat up here, but this one is close to it. So your first investments, the Liam blazer, because you will wear it forever and ever, and we will keep doing them forever and ever. 
you need the weekend day coat that has some novelty on it that just lifts the whole outfit but not so much novelty that it defines the outfit that your friends are like oh my god please stop wearing that outfit yes um you need the lightweight trench coat you can ball up into a tight ball and then you need the structure coat that has the um, raglan or a drop sleeve and then everyone needs a patent coat that is the one thing you probably sat down today and you thought I definitely did not know that I needed a patent coat, and you absolutely do need a patent coat. So um, that's it, and it is one hour. So thank you guys. Thank you. I will do the um, the recaps, and everything that we've shown is available on the site now, with the exception of the um, sweatpants, which are coming soon. Okay. And the cashmere sweater. And the cashmere sweater. And so next week we'll do something special for live, since it's Thanksgiving the day after. And um, thank you guys. Oh, I also have one more thing. DM your boutique stylist about the recut of the Lars boot if you haven't already. Yeah, because remember, want not, produce not. We're not making more than we need ever, never, ever again. Bye. See you soon. Okay. Ciao. Oh, they changed.